Well, good evening. If you would, turn in your hymnals to number 322. 322. Stand up, stand up for Jesus is the first song we'll sing tonight. Let's all stand together as we sing 322 on that first together. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Be soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal singing this evening good to see you in church tonight we have the little ones going to sing for us here in just a minute uh, we're going to have prayer then we'll turn them loose to sing she'll get them situated here and uh, good to see you in church tonight let's bow for prayer together shall we father thank you for this evening thank you for another opportunity to gather together with the people of God here in this place and we pay your blessing on our service here this evening make it what we need it to be Lord and what you would use in our lives Bless the children as they sing for us now tonight. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you may be seated.
488. 488. I was once a sinner, but I came pardoned to receive from my Lord. I have a new name written down in glory. 488. Let's sing that first together. I was once a sinner, but I came pardoned to receive from my Lord. This was freely given, and I know that he always kept his word. There's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. And the white road angels sing the story. A sinner has come home, for there's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. With my sins forgiven, I am bound for is mine with my sins forgiven I am bound for heaven never more to roam on that last all together in the book is written saved by grace oh the joy that came to my soul now I am forgiven by the blood I letters from the Wilsons, missionaries to the Russians in Israel. I am so thankful to the Lord for his blessing in our ministry over the last three months. It is a thrill to serve the Lord, to see him open doors and change hearts. Let me share some of the highlights. I traveled to Ukraine for three weeks in February and March. Our team ministers in Kharkov in eastern Ukraine. In spite of the crises racking Ukraine, Kharkov remains relatively calm. My primary ministry was to mentor to our missionaries in Kharkov, encouraging them, solving problems, and planning future ministry. Almost every day we went into the streets together, knocking on the doors of Jewish people. We had some outstanding opportunities to share the gospel. On the last day I was there, a Jewish man named Vladislav professed Christ as a savior. Shortly after I departed, Jonathan Garza made a follow-up visit to a Jewish couple we had visited, and the husband, Yuri, prayed and received Christ as his Savior. After much sowing, this ministry is beginning to bear fruit. There are multitudes of unreached Jews in other Ukrainian cities. The only way they will hear the gospel is if Christians in those cities witness to them. I am mobilizing churches in these cities to reach out to Jewish people. I wanted to expand this work into the cities of Kiev and Pila Serkva. When I called pastors in these cities, they were polite but skeptical. As I met with them, the Lord overcame barriers, opened doors, knit hearts together, and gave me opportunities to minister. I will return to Ukraine in July to continue helping these churches start Jewish ministries. Our ministry, <coughs> excuse me. Our ministry in Atlanta is similar to our ministry in the Ukraine. 
We go door to door witnessing to the Jewish people of Atlanta. Yet we know this job is vastly too big for us. Atlanta has 120,000 Jewish people, far more than we can reach alone. But the other thing Atlanta has is an abundance is churches and Christians. We are working hard to mobilize Atlanta's Christians to take the gospel to their Jewish neighbors. We are meeting with pastors, preaching in churches, and holding seminars to train Christians to witness to Jewish people. In April, we held a Jewish evangelism seminar at a church in the heart of Atlanta's Jewish area. People from nine churches attended and learned how to minister to Jewish people. We asked the Lord to call out light bearers, believers who are called by God to serve in their local church in a ministry of Jewish evangelism. We rejoice that God called four people to be light bearers. These are the first of what we trust will become a large virtual community of witnesses from churches all around Atlanta who will take the gospel to the Jew first and also to the Gentiles. Please pray for us as we continue to work in churches and to develop the light bearers into effective soul winners. I continue to minister in Israel from afar. It is a blessing every week to lead the midweek Russian Bible study by Skype. Perhaps my most fruitful work in Israel is the occasional mentoring of Pastor Daniel, the young man who is leading the church in Tel Aviv. Please pray for God's blessing and protection on both Israel and Ukraine during perilous times, our team in Kharkov, our Atlanta ministry, Messiah Baptist Tabernacle in Tel Aviv with Pastor Daniel and Rachel, and Rhonda, that the Lord would provide some relief from chronic health problems she's having. Blessing Israel, the Wilsons. That's good. Get your prayer guide out, if you would. Anybody need a prayer guide? Anybody miss, get missed this evening? We'll get one to you right away. Everybody have one? Very good. Great job. Uh, of course, start on the back with uh, tomorrow night, the CRC, the RU Inside down at the CRC, 630 to 830. And I appreciate you continuing to pray for that ministry. 29, I believe, last Thursday night there. Uh, 15 new ones and 14 returning ones. And uh had, I think, uh, eight that received Christ as their Savior on uh, last Thursday night. So God continues to bless there. And then, of course, Friday night for our Reformers Unanimous right here uh, from 7 to 9. And then Saturday will be the country fair, all right? And uh, excited about that and what, what the Lord has been doing. And uh, we're doing pretty well on the flyers. We're under, I think we have just around 5,000 to go, all right? We've got to get about 2,500 a day the next two days, and that will finish it up. And we'll be ready to go on Saturday, all right? And uh, 9 a.m., uh, be here. There's a lot of work to get done before we open up at noon. And uh, so we'll meet right in here and have a few final instructions and have prayer together, and then we'll get to work so we can be prepared, uh, been ready to go by noon. The other, the company that brings the inflatables and such, they'll be, they're supposed to be here about 11, and we want to have everything that, deals with us pretty much in place and ready to go and then get them set up and then we'll be ready for everyone to show up uh, by noon all right and so uh, we need you to be here in your place at 9 a.m. and uh, for our meeting and then we'll get busy from there all right and then uh, that that'll be a great great day looking forward to that now the praise reports on the inside uh, Jason Mays who came forward Sunday evening received Christ as a Savior and uh, that's an exciting thing for that family and uh, what God's doing there. Uh, we are over the 15,000 mark with the flyers passed out and uh, two more days to go. And uh, there you see the report from CRC. And we should have one more on there. The bus passed inspection on Monday. And uh, I'd say with flying colors and uh, very impressed and appreciate again so much those of you who worked on the uh, bus and uh, there were many hands on there. Uh, Brother Taylor and Brother Campbell spent a lot of time on that bus, but uh, Diane came down and lettered it on Friday night into the under the under the night light almost, and uh, for a while, and uh, got it done with Bill and uh, Amanda and some other new folks uh, helped clean the inside of the bus and scrub it and get the windows clean and everything. Got it was it was just uh, it got some rave reviews from what I hear uh, from those who were there. So uh, we praise the Lord for that. And the bus will be running on Saturday, ready to go, all right? And again, if uh, you want to help with Brother Brett with that, uh, he is off Friday. 
and uh, he'll be not only just picking up some things that need to get picked up, but he'll be getting flyers out too and uh, lining up more riders for the bus. If you want to help out and you want to ride on the big day, he can use some help. All right, we need some help on there for bringing folks in on Country Fair Saturday. All right, the pray continue to pray for the different church ministries and uh, the the ministries the Lord has blessed us with there, and of course uh, the health requests that are listed. And then underneath the uh, uh, praying for those in authority, want to continue to pray for our leaders in our country, uh, the military, those protecting us, and then uh, those battling cancer. Uh, Yvonne is just a young lady that uh, Andy, someone who works with Andy, uh, has asked that our church would pray for her. Uh, she's just a young lady, a young married lady uh, that is uh, cancer. And then uh, add add this name on there if you would um, it's Michelle but I think it's spelled M-I-C-H-A-E-L-E -E. and the last name is G-E-O-G-H-A-N it's pronounced Guggen I think or Gogan and uh, Michelle Gogan it's and she has lung cancer so put her underneath the cancer list if you would and that's a someone who Brenda Parrish knows and uh, also we want to pray for this lady's salvation don't believe she's a believer all right and then on the left hand side of the cancer list there you see uh, how do you say the first name Leila just like it looks like okay Leila Stover that's Cheryl's sister and uh, have the update here in my hand she is uh, her liver and pancreas are failing and there's a tumor on her liver uh, and they're saying if the tumor is causing she was retaining water and that's why she went to the doctor and that's what they've discovered was this tumor and uh, if it's causing the water retention then there's nothing they can do and they'll give her three to six months to live um, if if it isn't then maybe there's something they can do we're not sure they're uh, uh, they'll wait they'll get an MRI uh, soon I guess and uh, they'll make that determination but pray for uh, pray for her uh, Leila, does she go to Anchor Baptist? Yeah, okay. Saved, saved lady, loves the Lord. and But uh, pray for her and pray for her family. All right, Lord's will be done in that situation, okay? And then uh, those on the salvation list. And we started something new here. We're going to be praying for the unreached people groups of the world. And uh, we'll just be rotating these through. Uh, there are, I think there's nearly 3,000 unreached people groups in the world and so we'll be rotating those through and uh, just make this part of your weekly routine as you pray for the other needs on this list just pray for those names don't worry about if you don't pronounce them all right God knows what they are and uh, the important thing is we're praying and listen you're praying for laborers to go forth into the harvest all right that God had, uh, that, that that laborers would listen to God and they'd go to these unreached people groups okay and uh, then, of course, tonight our missionaries and uh, highlighted by the Wilsons and uh, their ministry there to the people of Israel and the, particularly the Russian folks in Israel. Brother Paul Abel, can you make your way up? And uh, I'd like you to pray for us this evening. And he'll lead us in our prayer as he prays uh, publicly. I want us to pray along with him silently. And uh, he'll lead us. But let's all unite our hearts together and let's pray for these requests and uh, pray for the fair on Saturday. God will give us a, just a wonderful turnout and many people receiving Christ as their Savior on Saturday. All right, Brother Pollock, come lead us. Okay, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us here, and we pray that you'd continue to bless us tonight as the preacher brings the message, that you'll uh, be with him and give him the exact words that we want to have preached tonight, and we do thank you for him, and we thank you for the way that you've uh, brought him here, and we do pray that you continue with us, each one of us tonight, that we would be uh, listening to the message and get that, that we are to get out of the message so that we can do more for thee. We do thank you for the good reports of the bus passing and going through the uh, through the uh, test and the trial that they get given. And we ask that you'd help the people that are going to work on the bus Saturday, that you'd uh, that he'd be here on time and that the bus would get out and get back in on time. And we ask that you'd 
there would be no problems with it, and we ask that you'd be with the people that help, that you'd give them just exactly what they know as they deal with children on the bus and uh, everything. We ask that you'd uh, be with our RU group that we have here. We thank you for the men that are being saved through this group, and we ask that you'd uh, build a hedge about them until they could get back in and, uh, each week and bring that that you give them, give them to them in their hearts, and we ask that you'd uh, continue to help this to grow, and we do pray that you'd be with those that uh, the young man, uh, May, that got James, that got Jason, that got saved uh, the other night. We pray that you'd help him. Uh, pray that you'd guide him in uh, the ways in that you want him to go, and we pray for uh, this Saturday that everything will go properly, that the people will be here on Saturday morning bright and early, and we'll be able to get things set up and be ready to go at noon. And we thank you for those people that you're going to bring in, and we ask that you'd uh, help us to be able to be a, be a blessing to them and be able to help them in, in all the situation of their life. And we just pray that there would be some that would come to the soul winning booth that would get saved, saved, and and then their life would change here. And we ask that you'd be with the <coughs> the, the uh, pray for those that are in authority that we have. In our government, we just pray that they would uh, see that there, there was a right way and a wrong way, and there is a way that you need to go, and it's the right way. And we ask that you'd help them to see that that it's not popular a lot now, but that, that that's the thing to do. And we ask that you'd be with those that are on our six list, and uh, we pray for those that uh, have got cancer and not not long to to live. We ask that you'd give the families comfort, and that you'd be right there with them throughout the time. And that we pray that those are, that are going to pass off into eternity would be saved and that they'd have uh, just know exactly where they're going. That's to heaven. We thank you for that, them, and we ask that you'd help them now and those that are on a sick list. We pray that you'd help them get over that, that they have the, the things that are ailing them and preaching and uh, give the doctors the uh, knowledge and the understanding of just exactly what to do and when to do it. And then we pray for our military that are out serving in other countries and in, in the United States. We pray that you'd watch over them and, and help them to be a good example and, and, and as they go through their daily routines. And then we pray for the salvation list we have. We just pray that those that are on the list, that there would be somebody sent to their door that would give, the, give out the salvation to them and they'd, they'd be able to take them off the list and that they'd be a Christian and start doing things that uh, Christians do, the coming to church and uh, winning others to Christ. We ask that you'd uh, be with our unreached people groups. There's a, there's a lot of names on there that uh, you can't pronounce, but we know that you know who they are, and we pray that you'd send forth laborers in this uh, work that is going on. And uh, There are so many nations that never have heard them once, and they'll hear in the United States, we hear three or four times and just shrug it off. So we pray that you'd help them bring the laborers in there and then our missionaries that are uh, missionaries throughout uh, across the land and uh, foreign countries we just pray that you'd give them comfort and uh, give them exactly what to get, give out, out to the people that they are uh, in charge of and we ask that you'd help them to get the messages that God would want them to have and what not not the messages that they want to do but what God wanted to have them to hear and we thank you for our missionaries, and we pray that you continue to watch over them and give them good health and uh, take them through each trial and tribulation. They'll be looking to you to help them through it, and we ask that you uh, bless them now, and we pray for the church ministries here that we have at the church. There's many of them on the list here, but we just pray that each person would be in their, in their place and their time this week, and we pray that we'd be able to get the services and everything out and done in, in your well and your way and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You're welcome. All right. We are glad to have Thelma visiting with us tonight. Thelma is a radio listener of Words to Encourage and uh, delighted she came this evening and got a chance to be in our midweek service. Uh, if the usher hasn't handed you a card yet, he's going to. And uh, if I can get anybody to move back there, that would be good. And uh, yeah, they're coming. All right. And uh, 
I want you to fill that card out for us, if you would, please, Thelma. Just we have a record of your visit with us, and uh, we want we have a pen that's going to come with that card. I want you to keep that as our gift to you for coming tonight. And uh, we're delighted you're here. We're going to sing a song while you fill that card out, and then folks will welcome her to the service tonight. We're glad, always glad to have radio listeners come and be part of the service here at Bible Baptist Church. All right, let's give Thelma a warm welcome, shall we? All right, take your songbook, turn over, if you will, number 96. Bring them in, all right? Number 96, we'll let Thelma fill the card out. The rest of us are going to stand and sing this song, Heart, Tis the Shepherd's Voice I Hear. Number 96. Heart, tis the shepherd's voice I hear Out in the desert, dark and drear Calling the sheep who've gone astray Far from the shepherd, fold away Bring them in, bring them in Bring them in from the fields of sin Bring them in, bring them in Bring the wandering ones to Jesus Who'll go and help this shepherd kind Help him the wandering ones to find Who'll bring the lost ones to the fold Where they'll be sheltered from the cold And greet one another. Make somebody feel welcome, especially our guests. We'll come back and sing that last stanza together. together out in the desert hear their cry out on the mountains wild and high hark tis the master speaks to thee go find my sheep where e'er they be bring them in bring them in bring them in from the fields of Hey, 
Hey, let's sing that last stanza one more time, and uh, let's do the chorus a little different, all right? Let's sing, bring them in, bust them in, drag them in, all right? You ever sung it that way? You sing, bring them in, bust them in, drag them, you know, drag the wandering ones to Jesus. That's how you do it, all right? And uh, let's sing that, all right? Third stanza, and then sing the chorus that way. Can you remember to do that? All right, Bob will help you, I'm sure, okay? All right, here we go. All right, let's sing that last. Out in the desert, hear their cry. Out on the mountains, wild and high. Heart is the master to thee. Go find my sheep wherever they be. Bring them in, bust them in, drag them in from the fields of sin. Bring them in, bust them in, drag the wandering ones to Jesus. All right, good job. You may be seated. That's how it works. That's what it means when it says compel them to come in. It means you don't take no for an answer. And uh, got to be here. Got to come. Amen. Wonderful. Good singing tonight. And uh, excited about what God's going to do Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday and Sunday. We got four great days ahead of us here. And uh, looking forward to what God's going to do. All right. We'll uh, take our last offering. Well, I shouldn't say that. It probably won't be the last offering for the country fair, but uh, it'll go towards the country fair. Uh, God, it's amazing. Some of the businesses, uh, I can't. We'll have, we'll have a list of everything that uh, folks have uh, given to us. Uh, you know, Pepperidge Farm had the buns, a thousand of them, and they, they didn't, we didn't pay for them. They gave them to us. Um, Dairy Queen has given us hot dogs and buns. Tony's Coney's given us hot dogs and buns, and we have uh, we, we're going to have over fifteen hundred hot dogs and buns. We're going to be ready, so it's uh, it's amazing. And uh, but then we've got uh, pizzas from Zanzi's and subs and Culver's ice cream and uh, what else is in there? She's got she's got uh, yeah we got big uh, things from Tim Hortons on a candy cane hot chocolate mix or something like that from Tim Hortons and then um, let's see Saturdays at her hair place over here for ladies they gave a bunch of stuff uh, one one thing I pulled out of there said a $60 value on it and they they gave that to us to give away and uh, let's see what else is in there um, yeah they got a pound of Starbucks coffee they gave us a pound of coffee I don't know how much a pound of Starbucks coffee is, but I know a cup's like five bucks, so uh, a pound of coffee must be like a lot of money, so that was uh, just, just, just amazing, and uh, folks, only, oh, Danette Flores, that is right down here on Parlin and Broadway, gave a $45 gift card, $45 arrangement of your choice for $45 and, uh, to give away, so it's just been great, and uh, excited about it, so uh, let's pray. We'll ask God's blessing on our giving tonight, all right? Father, thank you for this evening. Thank you for the privilege to give. And Lord, thank you for all that you're, you're doing and that you have done for this coming Saturday and the fair day. And Lord, we're expecting great things from thee. And Lord, we're anticipating many folks coming. I pray that you'll prepare their hearts, that many will be open to the gospel. We're asking you that we'll see many bow their head and humbly ask Christ to be their Savior. Lord, profit the day and prosper the day and bless the laborers as we prepare and we plan and we look to you to give the increase. Bless our giving tonight, Lord. Now, you know the needs of the day and we trust you to take care of them. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Take your Bible this evening now. Let's go to Matthew chapter 9, please. Matthew chapter 9. Matthew 9. I'll begin reading with verse number 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, <clears throat> and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Father, add your blessing to the reading of our scripture now tonight. Thank you for again for the opportunity that we have to be together here and to open up your precious word. And I pray, God, that you would do a work here this evening in each one of our hearts, uh, that you would challenge us with these words that Jesus gave in Matthew 9. Lord, I pray that you would do what only you can do here in our midst this evening. Help me as I bring the study this evening and the folks as they listen. And I simply ask your will be done in every heart and life. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jesus is healed now and he taught, has taught around the cities and the villages. And his heart, the Bible says, is uh, filled with compassion over the multitudes that he sees. They, they have no direction. They have no purpose. It uses the phrase, they're scattered like sheep. We talked Sunday night about how sheep just go from one clump to the next clump. Uh, there is no rhythm. There's no direction uh, to their life. They have no purpose uh, for the existence. And, and, he, and he looks at the people and he gets overwhelmed with compassion on them. And by the way, that's how people live today. People don't have no purpose. They have no meaning. Uh, they have no direction in their life. And, and you know, you, listen, life doesn't begin at 40. Life begins when you meet Jesus Christ. And when you meet Him, He gives you direction. And uh, He focuses your life and gives you a purpose. And Jesus said to His followers, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Then He says, Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that He would send forth laborers into His harvest. You know, God's work is done by laborers. God's work is done by laborers. Now, I included the Webster 1828 definition of labor on your page because I wanted you to see it, all right? Exertion of muscular strength or bodily exertion which occasions weariness, particularly the exertion of the limbs in occupations by which subsistence is obtained as in agriculture and manufactures. Now, it's in distinction from the exertion of strength in play or amusement, which are denominated exercise rather than labor. So what's labor? It's toilsome work, pains, travail, bodily exertion, which is attended with fatigue. After the labors of the day, the farmer retires and rest is sweet. That's laboring. You know, that's, we sing sometimes, let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. Most of us have sung that song, we've never practiced that song. Okay? Laboring to the point of the physical exertion and exhaustion and, and falling into bed at night having been not only spiritually spent, but physically spent for the Lord. We, we don't labor from the dawn till setting sun. We, we do all we can to get somebody to give an hour to serve the Lord. Okay? And, and this is laborers. God doesn't need more preachers. He needs more laborers. God doesn't need more missionaries. He needs more laborers. He doesn't need more teachers. He needs more laborers. He doesn't need more singers. He needs more laborers. He doesn't need more bosses. He needs more laborers. God is looking for laborers. People, common, every day, roll up your sleeves and go to work, 
laborers. You see, every one of us can labor. Because when you're going to work, when you're going to labor, talent doesn't matter. Background doesn't matter. How tall you are or how much you weigh doesn't matter. It's just a matter of will you labor. Your personality doesn't even matter. Let's just labor. Be therefore steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is never in vain in the Lord. Laboring for God. The song said, when we, when we labor for the Master from the dawn till setting sun, and we talk of all His wondrous love and care, then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. And by the way, that's when we rest. Somebody says, man, when am I going to rest? When you get to heaven. That's when we'll rest. You say, man, I just, when I go to bed at night, I'm so tired. That's what the bed's for. You're supposed to be tired. Labor, labor. So the Lord's looking for laborers. Now, let's fill your paper out tonight. Number one, the harvest is plenteous, the Lord said. The harvest is plenteous. Plenteous means it's abundant. Plenteous means it's in great quantity. Well, pastor, it's just getting harder and harder to see people saved. That's not what Jesus said. Jesus said the harvest is plenteous. It's abundant. It's of great quantity. Almost, uh, we're just a little shy yet of seven and a half billion people in the world. 300, nearly 350 million in the United States of America. Eleven and a half million people in the state of Ohio. 825,000 people in Columbus, Ohio. Can I, can I really help you with something? 84,000 people within four miles of Bible Baptist Church. 84,000 people within four miles of our church. Do you understand? 20,000 flyers isn't hardly even touching it when there's 80,000 people just within four miles. Many of you drive more than four miles to come to church. That's just within four miles of the church. I'm sure we could probably double that within eight miles. The harvest is plenteous. The harvest is plenteous. There's plenty of folks. In fact, there's 362,000 more people in the world today than there was yesterday. That's, there, there's 15,000 babies born in the world every hour. That's 251 births a minute. There's 156,000 people that die every day. There are, out of the seven, almost seven and a half billion you know, there's some nearly three billion that are part of unreached people groups that have never heard of Jesus Christ. Have, not only do they not have a Bible or nothing in their language to tell them about Jesus, they never heard who Jesus is. They don't have a, uh, the Jesus film. They don't have anything to tell them about Jesus Christ. And they, listen... 156,000 people a day are dying and going out into eternity. And the vast majority of them are dying and going to hell. And by the way, we have that responsibility. I think largely that responsibility falls on all believers, but I think largely that falls on American believers. What are we doing? You know what we're doing? We're, uh, Americans are putting down their money on some fight that a fella fight and takes home a check for $100 million. They had $100 to pay for a pay-per-view to see that fight, and they had over 3 million people sign up for it. That's $300 million right there while the world goes to hell.
the problem isn't with the harvest. The problem isn't with the harvest. There's plenty of people. They're everywhere. So the harvest is plenteous. The second thing is what the Lord said is, but the laborers are few. He said the fields, he told him in another passage, but to the woman at the well, he said, lift up your eyes and look on the fields. They're white already to harvest. Well, what's the problem then? There's no one to reap the harvest. The problem is he's got a labor problem. They're not enough who will put forth an effort to tell others of Jesus Christ. To go and thrust in the sickle, and so to speak, and reap the harvest for the Lord. Oh, listen, you take a poll. Yes, we want the harvest gathered. Yes, we want people to be saved. But let someone else do it. Let someone else give out tracts. Let someone else work the bus route. Let someone else pass out the flyers. No, 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 don't, don't be that way. Say, say, no, Lord, here am I. Send me. Let me do that, God. Let me be a laborer in the harvest. Because every one of us can be a laborer. He's not asking for leaders. He's asking for laborers. He's not asking for specialists. He's asking for laborers. He's not asking for uh, uh, singers. He's asking for laborers. He's not asking for teachers. He's asking for laborers. That's all. Just laborers. Like that little maid who pointed Naaman to the prophet in Samaria. Elijah is saying, you go to him. He can heal you for leprosy. Like Andrew who brought his brother Peter to Jesus. Like Philip who brought Nathaniel to Christ. Just laborers. Just people laboring in the harvest. The young boy who, as a teenager, went to a church service. It was snowing badly on a Sunday evening. And he made his way through the streets of London and, and slipped into a little chapel that he saw there in the, in the city of London to find out there were only a handful of people that made it through the snowstorm to the church service and the pastor was not one of them. And so a faithful deacon in the service got up and said, I'll bring a message tonight. And he preached, I think, Isaiah 45, 22, about look unto me and be ye saved, all ye ends of the earth. And he just said, look unto me and be saved. Look unto me and be saved. And Charles Haddon Spurgeon went forward and accepted Christ as Savior. Why? Because somebody just said, I'll be a laborer. He said, well, the pastor couldn't make it. It's snowing. Let's just go home. No, he said, man, we're here. Let's have church. And let's labor. I'll bring a message. And God let a, allowed a Spurgeon to be saved. Just a laborer. Another Sunday school teacher concerned about his students, that each one of them would know Christ their Savior, went to visit his students, and one of his young men worked in a shoe store, and he waited for him to go on break, and he took him outside. He asked the manager if he could speak with him, and he, and he took him outside, and he led that young boy to faith in Jesus Christ. That young boy's name was Dwight Lyman Moody. And Kimball was the Sunday school teacher's name. But what was he? A laborer. Just a laborer going out to tell others of Jesus. Listen, there's, there's, there's got to be some other Spurgeons and other Moody's out there. But we have to have the laborers to bring the harvest in. We have to have the laborers that are willing to go out there. There's another Peter out there. Not, not to be won by PhDs or not to be won by specialists. Just to be won by laborers. Laborers for the Lord. The apostles got the message. You know, every one of them ended up, as most of you know, uh, except for the apostle John, ended up being a martyr for Christ. Most of them, but every one of them, went preaching the gospel somewhere. Philip became a missionary to Asia, a laborer. Matthew became a missionary to Ethiopia, a laborer. James, one of the pastors of the church in Jerusalem, a laborer. Bartholomew, missionary to India, a laborer. Thomas also went to India, a laborer. Simon the Zealot went to Africa as a laborer. On and on and the list goes. Listen, they understood the heart of the Savior. They understood the command of Christ. And they labored. And they went to spread the gospel to every creature. The harvest is plenteous. The laborers are few. 
Number three, we realize what the Lord said here. Notice what he said. The harvest truly is plenteous, the labors are few. Verse 38, pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth labors into, what's the last two words of the verse? His harvest. Whose harvest is it? It's his harvest. We work for him in his harvest field. It's his field. Now, look at, hold your finger there, or put your piece of paper there in Matthew 9. We'll come back and finish that. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Would you look there, please? 1 Corinthians chapter 3. In 1 Corinthians 3, they were, they were carnal, means they were walking in the flesh. They were not listening to the Spirit. And they were getting favorites. They were divi actually dividing in the church over preachers. Okay? Uh, Paul said in uh, verse, verse number 3, he says, Ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, here's the pastors, ready? I am of Paul. Another says, I am of Apollos. Are ye not carnal? Isn't that of the flesh? Who is Paul? Is what he says. And who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. Ministers, there is just they're just laborers, just servants. That's all they are. Notice what Paul says in verse six: I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Now get to get number seven. Neither is he that planteth anything, neither is he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Okay? Uh, you, you, you plant and you water, but listen, we give the increase to God because it's His harvest. It's His, it's His harvest we get to reap. And we're simply there, and we get to labor in His harvest. You know what we are? If we're not anything, you know what that means? We're nothing. What are we all? Are we? We're laborers. We're just laborers. We're not in it to make us look good. We're in it to make the Master look good. We're in it to bring glory to God, not glory to ourselves. He gets the glory for every soul that's saved. Why? It's His crop, not mine. Sometimes we... We want to take credit when we get to see somebody receive Christ. And we'll have folks saved on Saturday. But listen to me. You don't know who's witnessed to them before. You don't know who's prayed for them before. You don't know how many sermons they've heard. You don't know who's given them the gospel. You don't know how much planning and watering's taken place before you get to pick the fruit off the tree on Saturday. Okay? But be aware, by the way, you don't, listen to me, you don't have to be in the soul winning tent to lead someone to Christ on Saturday. You, they're going to be there. The harvest is going to be plenteous. It's going to be all around us. Don't miss an opportunity for God. God may give you to pull somebody aside and give them the gospel. Be ready to give hope. Every member ought to be armed with your New Testament and have it with you and be ready to give the gospel. Don't just leave it to someone else. Just as Boaz dropped some handfuls on purpose for Ruth. God will do that for you and me in His harvest field. There are opportunities. He'll, he'll see to it you reap if you faint not. Okay? In due season ye shall reap if you faint not. A lot of times people don't reap because they just plain quit. Don't quit. It takes time for that, that, that crop to come. It takes time for the harvest to come in. And then it's work. But it's His harvest, not ours. So we have the harvest is plenteous. What's the problem? The laborers are few. But reminded, it's not our harvest. It's His harvest. It belongs to Him. Number four, God is sending. Are you going? God is sending. Are you going? Notice what it says back in Matthew 9. It's very interesting. He said, The harvest truly is plenteous, verse 37, but the Labors are few. I will pray, therefore, that the Lord will send labors into the harvest. Is that what Jesus said? He did not say that, did he? What did he say? Pray ye, therefore. 
the Lord of the harvest. He will send forth laborers into his harvest. He didn't even say pray for the harvest. He said pray that God will send laborers into the harvest. And he didn't say, I'll pray for it. He said, you pray for it. You pray and ask the Lord for that. And he wants us praying for laborers into the harvest. You see, God, God I, I believe, listen, the Lord, the Lord has commanded us to go. The Lord, honestly, the Lord does not have to pray for us to go. He's commanded us to go. Notice Romans 10, would you? Let's, let's look at that together, will you? Romans chapter 10. Turn over there if you would. Right after the book of Acts, you have Romans. Go to chapter 10. Most of us are very familiar with verse 13. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But now in verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? They can't believe on somebody not heard. There's the unreached people groups. But wait, how shall they hear without a preacher? Hey, that's not the pastor. That's not someone you call preacher. A preacher is anybody that proclaims the gospel. That's who he's talking about here. Someone who will give the gospel to somebody else. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Every, every Christian in that sense is a preacher. Even the women are preachers. Okay? In that regard, even the women who preach the gospel. But now notice, they're not going to hear without a preacher, but how shall they preach except they be sent? Well, let me ask you a question. Have we been sent? Yes. Every one of us has been sent. As the Father has sent me, even so send I you. We're all, we've all been sent. Just a matter of whether we're obeying orders or not. We've been sent by the Lord Himself. That's our job. That's our commission. Are we following orders? Are we doing what the Lord has commanded us to do? Someone said, There is no shortage of laborers. We simply have unsurrendered and unwilling laborers. I think why, why the Lord asks us to pray for laborers is it's awful difficult to pray for laborers and not be a laborer yourself. You're, I remember years ago, I was in high school. I might have, might have been in my first year of college. I was in the college and career class at the Canton Baptist Temple. And at that time, just in our, just in our college and career class, we would run anywhere from... 350 to 400. That would just be college-age kids in the church. And Mel Sabaka was our teacher at that time, and Mel at that time uh, was in his 50s, 55, 57, something like that. I mean, here you are in a church. Uh, I think there were seven pastors on staff at the time. A normal Sunday would be 4,000 to 4,300, 4,400. Big Sundays have 5,000 people there. It was, a big, it was a big church, comfortable, taken care of, and he's getting burdened for New York City, praying that God would send some young man out of his college or several young men out of the college and career to go plant a church in New York City. And one day, I'll never forget, one day saying, fellas, I've been praying and tears are coming down his face. He says, if no one's going to go, I'm going to go. And that's what he did. He resigned his position, and at 57 years old, or whatever he was, he went to New York to start a church. It's hard to pray for laborers and not be a laborer. Hard to pray for laborers to go into harvest and not go into the harvest. So pray. Pray. I don't want to suggest that we be obedient to Jesus. I want us to be obedient to Jesus. I'm not suggesting that we do what he says. I'm saying let's do what he says. Let's get into the harvest. There's another Pete and Emma out there. There's another Gene Nance out there. There's another Danny and Bobby Wright out there. They're out there. Let's be laborers. Let's be laborers. Hey, just roll up your sleeves and go to work. 
just laboring for Jesus. J. Wilbur Chapman, it's interesting. J. Wilbur Chapman was evangelist. He's the one who gave Billy Sunday his start. When Billy Sunday used to travel with J. Wilbur Chapman and set the tent up for Wilbur Chapman. That was Billy Sunday's job. Uh, get the tent and the chairs and all that set up and sawdust on the ground. And when Billy Sunday was called to preach and started out in evangelism, his first seven sermons came from J. Wilbur Chapman. And uh, Billy Sunday was always worried that he'd, they'd ask him to extend a meeting because he only had seven sermons. And he was scared to death. They'd ask him to come preach an eighth one, and he didn't have an eighth one. He'd just have to start repeating the first one again. That's how he got his start. J. Wilbur Chapman was a great evangelist. And he said this, the New Testament tells of 40 people that were healed by Jesus. Of those 40, 34 were brought to Jesus by friends, or he was taken to them by friends. So only 6 out of 40 found their way without any help at all. So the vast majority of people who get to Jesus get there because somebody was concerned about them. And somebody wanted them to get to Jesus. Why did, why did Heather get to Jesus? Because her sister's concerned about her. Got her to Jesus. I, I don't know. I haven't talked to them. But I got a feeling that Jason might have got to Jesus because Heather was concerned about him. You may have saw something in her in just the, the, the five, six days that she was saved that he decided he ought to come and see what that's all about. I mean, he came, he came ready to get saved. Who can you bring to Jesus? Who is it that God has for you to reap in his harvest? Hmm? God is sending. Are you going? Listen carefully. I like this statement. Somebody said, everyone's work soon becomes no one's work. Everyone's work soon becomes no one's work. If you think everybody else will do it, nobody does it. Found that out with flyers going out, don't you? If we think everybody else is going to do it, nobody does it. Everybody has to do their part. Everybody has to get with it. And that's why I say, everybody be prepared come Saturday. Everybody be prepared. I'm, I'm, I'm just believing that we're going to have more than what four or five people in that so many are going to be able to handle. And if there's people at that table and there's, there's people, you look in there and you see them dealing with other people and they're just looking at things and nobody's talking to them, you better peel off where you are and get over there. That's what it's all about. You want to get over there and give them the gospel. Okay? Let's, 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 let's ask God to put us to work in his harvest, in his harvest field. See, take it personally. Take it personally. Take it upon yourself. God is sending. Are you going? Will you say, here am I, Lord. Send me. Harvest is plenteous. The labors are few. It's his harvest. God is sending. Are you going? Let's pray together. Shall we, Father? We bow before you now this evening. Thank you for the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 9. These last few verses that we've looked at this evening. Forgive us, Lord, when so many other things become more important to us than the harvest of souls than telling folks about Jesus. Bringing them to where they can meet the one who can forgive their sin and save their soul. We have a wonderful opportunity. The people are going to come to us on Saturday. We want to show them the love of God. We want to do things for them for no cost. To let them know that you love them. And we love them. Lord, we want to let them know that you love them so much that you didn't just give them a hot dog or a Coke, but you gave your only begotten Son. That if they'll put their faith in Christ as their Savior, their sins can be forgiven and they can have the gift of eternal life. So Lord, we pray for 
your harvest on Saturday. And that we'll labor in that harvest, not only on Saturday, but all the year long. That, Lord, we'll never think that it's everyone else's work, but it will each of us believe it's our work. It's my work. And we'll take it personally. Help us to go and preach the gospel to every creature. Help us to do it here and help us to do it in our state. Help us to do it in our country. Help us to do it to the ends of the earth. We're asking you to send forth laborers into the harvest. And at the same time, we'll say, Here am I, Lord. Send me. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed. I'll finish the prayer in just a minute. But I wonder tonight how many here would say, Preacher, the Spirit of God stopped at my seat this evening. And I... I need to be a part of that harvest. God is sending, and by His grace, I will go. I want to labor in the harvest that God has for me. He's sending, and by His grace, I'm going to be going. I'm going to do my best to preach the gospel and win others to Christ, bring others to Jesus, and tell them about the Savior. Pastor, God touched my heart tonight. Pray for me this evening. Will you slip your hand up? Christian, say, pray for me. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. What a difference that would make. You may put them down. What a difference it could make. Father, thank you for decisions that have been made tonight. Lord, as we pray before you, I pray, God, as we gather back together, if you tarry, you're coming, and we get to have Sunday service that will listen to testimonies of people who raised their hand tonight who got to lead someone to Jesus on Saturday. Lord, immediately hear our prayer. Answer that prayer. I pray, Lord, that Thursday and Friday and Saturday and Sunday, that every day we'd see people come to receive Christ as their Savior. We would understand what you meant when you said the harvest truly is plenty problem is we don't have people who want to work and labor and sweat and toil and exert energy help us to be laborers for you we love you we thank you lord for people who are sensitive to the spirit of god and willing to respond to what he tells them to do and father dismiss us with your care keep us busy about your business now this week give us your strength and your power Help us to do your work in the way you'd want it to be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together, shall we? We're going to sing together tonight. Isn't he wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? Let's sing that as we dismiss. Hey, isn't he wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? Eyes have seen, ears have heard, it's recorded in God's Word. Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? One more time, ready? Hey, isn't he wonderful? Sing it! Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? Eyes have seen, ears have heard, it's recorded in God's Word. Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? God bless you. You're dismissed. Don't forget to sign out some flyers.